Thank you, Sue. You're welcome. Next slide, thank you. Okay, so um, I'm sure we've all been thinking about rehabilitation and what it means. Um, I looked it up in my dictionary, old school, and um, you can see the definition here. Um, it, it, and of course, it's associated with illness. Um, but many people with cochlear implants don't feel they are ill. They don't feel they have a health condition. Um, it, I often think of it like me using my iPhone. Somebody with a cochlear implant is using a technological solution to help them to communicate. So for me, I feel more comfortable perhaps moving away from a medical model of rehabilitation. Next slide, please. So um, the, the BCIG that I am chair of, we talk about often the five phases of patient management. And of course, although the surgery happens at the beginning, um, the other stages happen along with each other. They're not necessarily sequential. Next slide, please. So uh, for me, I think rehabilitation its main aim is to make participation easier. So maybe participation in work, education, leisure, whatever the patient wants to participate in. But really, and I think Stuart has just commented that this is what we're all kind of saying tonight. Rehabilitation has to enable self-advocacy. So it has to improve empowerment so the patient can self-manage. and. Perhaps another aim of rehabilitation is to maximise outcomes so that we get a good return from the investment. And I'm not meaning the financial investment. I'm meaning the patient's investment in terms of time, energy, risk, having a cochlear implant. We want to do everything we can to maximise the benefit. Next slide, please. So uh, I'm not crazy about the word rehabilitation because of its medical connotation or, or even drug connotations sometimes. So I was trying to think, what would, should we be saying? And I, and I think I would prefer to think of it as coaching. And then I was thinking mentoring, maybe. Um, and, and, and of course, coaching and mentoring are different and both equally important with mentoring um, suggesting experience of the situation, i.e. peer support. And we've heard so much about the value of, of peer support tonight, and I just can't overstate that. Next slide, please. So for me, I, I'm saying coaching now, Sue, not rehab, I'm afraid. I've transitioned. Right. <laughs> so for me, the main questions are, what does coaching involve? Who needs coaching? Does everybody need coaching or do some people not? How should it be delivered and who should it be delivered by? Next slide, please. Um, and the next one. Oh, sorry. Meg. Oh, and and, and the, perhaps the main issue of this is for an individual patient, how do we even know what they need and who should be doing, doing that for the patient? Next one, please. So people with cochlear implants are, are, of course, as diverse a group as any group of people. And what we really want to do is think about exactly how we personalise coaching for people. So such a wide range of people, obviously, adults with congenital deafness, um, people who were implanted as children who've become adults with implants, people with significant residual hearing, people with cognitive difficulties, and dementia really got to think how can we create the best package of coaching for everybody next slide please so it, i was just thinking over the past few weeks what does coaching involve and these were just some of the things that i thought of and i shared within my team and people came back and kind of thought of other things so coaching someone with an implant is a really big job and a really varied job. I'm an audiologist, so I do the mapping. And th the mapping is 
an easy part really of giving access to sound. The difficult part is providing and supporting, providing the coaching and supporting the patient and knowing how to do that. Next slide, please. Um, so you can see this on the BCIG website. We asked how coaching was done during the pandemic. I'll just move on from that. You can have a look at that later. Next slide. Thanks, Case. So who should be the coach, first of all? Is it the implant centre clinician always? Is it a local clinician? Is it the patient themselves? Um, is it a, a peer support network? Is it the patient's family? Or could it be an artificial intelligence coach? Could we start with some kind of AI system that will help lead the patient in the right direction, help them identify what they don't know, what they need coaching with. So this is my new thought now, AI, just at the beginning to direct people. Next slide, please. So uh, this is a little kind of scary insight into my brain, really. So what I want you guys to do is get in touch with me, really, and... Um, any thoughts you have on this? Um, how can we decide who does coaching? What is the right coaching for the big, diverse group of adults with hearing loss? Please get in touch. Thank you for listening. <laughs>